Hey everyone, we're going to make some Valentine soaps and uh, this is a fairly beginner-ish project, um, beginner to intermediate, um, but don't be afraid to give it a try. It's not nearly as complicated as it looks. You just need to make sure you're following the directions pretty closely, especially when it comes to the part about the painting and the second layer, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, I do have some minor instructions at the top. Uh, you, however you get your soap melted, just make sure not to overheat it. And um, you want it as clear as possible. So use the clearest possible soap you have access to. And uh, be aware that adding a bunch of stuff can cloud it up. Uh, you don't want to add a bunch of oil. You want to add skin safe, soap safe, fragrance oil. And I go a little lighter on the first layer and a little heavier on the second layer. But I still keep it about 1 to 1.5%. 1 um, yeah, yeah, I did 1% I think in the clear and 1.5% in the second layer, which you'll see in a little bit again. Um, so as we're about to pour here, I, I give you numbers about uh, temperatures, etc. Make sure you realize when I do that, this is for the crafter's choice soap. If your soap has a higher melting point, you're going to have to take it to a higher melting point, obviously. Take it a little beyond your melting point, but not by a huge amount. You don't want the soap to burn or get cloudy or rubbery or any of things, the things that can happen if you overheat your soap. But just get it a little bit beyond that because you don't want a skin to form while you're placing your plastic on and working it around. So um, you can choose to do just one at a time, um, which might be better if you've never done this before or if you do have a higher milk point soap, um, you might want to do them one at a time. I'm doing two at a time um, because this soap has a little bit more of a longer open time. And I, its uh, melting point is at the highest about 125 and I added five degrees above that for my melting point for these. It just keeps it warmer a little bit longer, it, <clears throat> excuse me, and allows me time to wiggle that uh, soap, not soap, <laughs> wiggle the plastic around a little bit. Once you get the plastic on, it's going to stay fluid for some time, um, which is why pouring one at a time can make a difference. Please make sure you notice that I put that plastic in the middle first and then I'm kind of pulling it in a little bit. I'm picking up the edge. I make it about one and a half to two inches um, of a border around the outside when I'm measuring to cut these around the edge of my mold because you want that room to give you the wrinkles. So I start with it stretched out, press in the middle to make sure that there's no bubbles and then slowly bring the edge of that plastic closer to the edge of the mold and it will adhere to it so it can help you keep it from falling in and help you see how much room you need you might you can always pull it back out again um, it is pretty forgiving in that way that this will stay like I said open or fluid for quite a, a while you can play with those wrinkles until they look like what you want um, and you don't want just a few little waves in it. It's a different look. You want to try to get it kind of a crackly wrinkle. Um, it's, it looks, reflects more the technique that I'm imitating, the crushed velvet resin art technique. Um, so I, I try to make sure that the wrinkles are going in every direction. You notice I'm pouring more of those are kind of, I'm just playing with those and they're not ones I use the plastic wrap with. I'm, they're just almost, I'm not going to say throwaways because they aren't. I'm just kind of showing a couple of other ideas you can do. Um, and they're just little one-offs I'm doing just for fun and saying, okay, well, for Valentine gifts, you could also do this. I, I tend to do that with um, most of my holiday soaps just to give people something else they can try along with it uh, if they want to get a little bit, a little bit more creative and go outside of what I'm saying. I've been always been that person that 
doesn't like to do an exact copy of what somebody else is doing. So I tend to look for ways to make it my own. Um, and this just gives you some more options to play with. Um, but the main focus is these, the crushed velvet. So you see sticking it right in the center. That is so important. You can lift if you get bubbles. You can lift the plastic again and maybe give it a spritz with your rubbing alcohol. Um, these will take longer to set up. With the magic of, of uh, filming, you won't see that time. But Because uh, once I get it the way I want it, then I'm skipping ahead, of course. So you don't have to wait around for them to set up. But they're going to be lo much longer to set up than what you normally do at least twice as much um i think i let i think these set up for about an hour um with a fan on them um yeah and the other two you'll see i i let those set up as is i don't put plastic on them because we'll be doing something a little bit different and um like i said with a little bit more kind of freedom to do what you want all right so those are those are done now and they're set up and i'm I'm experimenting in the middle of my own video because this is the kind of thing I do. If I get an, a weird idea, sometimes I just go with it. This is Wicked from Mad Micah's. Yes, I am an affiliate. There is an affiliate link. And if you purchase something through my link, I will receive a small percentage at no cost to you, at no additional cost to you. It will just be the regular price of what you would normally buy at Mad Micah's, which is... Um, a really wonderful mica company company if you have not used them very ethical uh, company um, and you see here this is the fun stuff pulling it out it can be a little frustrating um, but please note that I'm using a very light hand in doing this I'm kind of flicking it out almost except at this one spot where it's stuck you can you see I'm holding the mold and the soap down a little bit with the other hand that's to avoid pulling that soap out from the mold. You don't want to do that. You want to try to avoid breaking that seal because um, it might destroy the look you're going for. And all this is is that wicked black mica, could be any black mica, could even be activated charcoal and rubbing alcohol. I'm just touching it into the little, a few of the little crevices. I was experimenting with an idea. It didn't turn out exactly like what I wanted but it kind of came out neat um, the in initial idea and I should have just stuck with um, kind of a diagonal line going across the soap I was looking to do kind of a broken heart soap but um, I don't know I played too much with where that mica was running in there and I couldn't stop myself so um, which does kind of create some other looks for down the road I do have some other techniques I'm going to be um, doing with this technique um, I'll be playing with this this kind of addition to it more further down the road but I have some other unique perspectives on this coming as well in the in the over the next few months or so I've got a big lineup of stuff so I can't exactly guarantee where this one is gonna come back in but it will come back in for sure and watch here again, I'm kind of lightly flinging it upward with my with my one hand and holding it down with the other. Most of the time it just kind of, it just pulls out fairly gently. Um, if you find a lot of resistance, just like with the bags of Melton Pour, if you buy the larger, um, the larger sizes of Melton Pour from Wholesale Supplies Plus, Crafter's Choice, um, I'm not affiliated with them. I just absolutely love their product and I find it the clearest when I'm working with, um, art soaps, which is pretty frequently. Um, so this is the, well, you already saw the name of it, but, uh, you know, use the clearest soap you can find. You may not be, may not have access to this company. Um, I know it's not available all over, but, um, anyway, you see I'm kind of flinging it up. If it sticks like those bags do stick as you're trying to release them. Uh, pull like you would pull the direction you think it's going don't just jerk it out it does matter sometimes if you switch the direction you're pulling it's everything and it just comes right out um okay so this is the only non mad micas color i'm using in this one and it's it's because it's a, a duochrome color i wanted to 
try. It's one that I have that works fairly well for Valentine's Day. The colorant doesn't um, always show up in the light. It's hard to catch in the light the way on film, the way it the way it looks. So uh, you'll see a few kind of variations on it. It is more of a magenta, um, a hot pink, and it and kind of a bronze are the two colors that it that it kind of flashes between. Um, so some of them it looks a little darker, like it's a purple and 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 yellow or purple and orange, and that's just not quite it. Anyway, you see the other colors I'm using up there on the screen. So I'll get away from the colors. And the technique. The important part of this technique is that you get every single nook and cranny with the mica. It, you don't want it filled with mica because you're going to try to remove as much mica as you can that's loose. You want it to stick to the soap. It will stick fairly well to the soap. Um, pretty quickly, um, you, there's real quick note on the technique I'm doing here. I'm using Sparkle Me Red, and in it's a little bit more like it's one of the glitter-like micas, um, but it is still a mica, but that means that the particle size is a little bit bigger. And so when the particle size is larger than your typical mica, you want to come back in over it with another color because any little tiny particle size spot that is left open will show black and you don't want to see black from the front of this and the exception here being being the one that I was experimenting with I wanted to see black cracks so I um, that's why I put the black mica in at the um, at the start but you don't want it to accidentally show up. And so the ways to avoid that is to make sure that that mica is really brushed in well. I even come back later and brush all of them in really, really well because you just don't want um, any of those crevices missed. Um, so I kind of pounce it in there first and then I brush one direction and I brush another and then I brush another direction. Just get all of it in there. And when you remove it, when you're trying to remove the loose stuff you want to remove as much as possible or you end up with kind of a, a little bit of a mess but um, you'll see um, in just a second I'm gonna tip it over and you just want to give it a gentle pat um, because you don't want to knock the soaps <laughs> you don't want to knock the soaps out of the mold you want them to remain stuck to the bottom um, you want to like I said earlier you don't want to break that seal or the black or dark background that you put on the back which is imperative for this look um, it just it will mess it all up um, so why do you need a dark background well you need a dark background in these sorry I lost some footage on this but basically the purple I just did a variety of purples and I'm listing them up there when you'll see when I am playing with it a little bit more and I also lost the footage of putting the little dots on. You just take a pipette with hot, clear soap and make whatever design you feel like. I do have full tutorials on this technique. Um, and I will link one for sure at the end of, of this video so you can catch that full process. But um, so back to the, the getting uh, the black. Why is it important on the back? Um, you're you're wanting to block the light from going through where the mica is placed and it's real easy for that light to go through it believe me um it sends all of the it reflects the light and gives you the most incredible looks um and that's part of the magic of it you can use um the duochrome micas with really great results. You can use interference micas with beautiful results. Um, and really, you can use any mica that has uh, reflective properties, um, but you got you definitely have to back it um, as with something dark. It doesn't have to be black. You can do a really dark blue, really dark purple. I could have even done a really dark red with these, but I didn't want to because um, I'm doing so, a variety of them, so I didn't want to uh, kind of stray too much from that. Here's the removing. This is what I'm doing. I use the same brush. 
once you've really rubbed that mica around and you have it everywhere, even if a color you're you're really not wanting to mix in with it, you're not going to mix in with it with the the mica that's touched the soap. Um, once it touches the soap, it sticks really well. So you're not going to destroy your design um, if there's a little bit of mica from the other the soap next door, basically, when you're when you're brushing it back out. But it will um, remove extra mica and maybe fill in a spot that you didn't see that was there. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is so icky today. Um, one second. Maybe a little water will help. Um, this technique, again, this is what, this is why I wanted it, it to be something you could do. I'm just, anything you want. You can personalize these. Um, the ones with the little goofy raindrops that didn't end up very good because I couldn't see when I was putting them in. And the um, the little heart. I really was kind of flying by the seat of my pants on that design. And I just used a little art stylus and carved something in. You could carve, and I wish I'd thought of it earlier. You could carve um, you and your sweetheart's initials into the to the heart and really personalize it. Or, or the person's name that the gift is intended for. Um, aha, now this is important. <laughs> you can't spray it. You can't. We are so used to spraying layers with alcohol um, when it comes to melt and pour soap, but you cannot spray these because it will disperse the mica and it will pull it off of the soap and now you will just see spots of black soap, which is also why you are seeing me pour into a um, stirrer, a ladle, a spoon, anything. Um, spatula, that's the real word I'm looking for. <laughs> pour it into the spatula. Um, you probably could have poured it over the back as well. I have a little bit, bit more control when it's poured into it and I can kind of guide it with these. Um, I'm pouring it pretty darn hot because I think 133 um, because you can't spray it with alcohol so you want it to stick and it needs to be poured hot if you want it to adhere to that mica layer and that's another reason you don't want to leave a bunch of mica in your your layers will break apart right away um, so I pour hot and I pour I don't fill the whole cavity you notice I poured a little bit I poured about quarter of an inch or just enough to cover everything and then I come back and pour more because when you're pouring hot soap, the more you pour, the longer it's going to stay hot, the more likely it is to melt your design because you don't want it to melt the beautiful little crackles that you created with the saran wrap or the little spots you put in with, um, with a pipette full of hot soap and you put did a little, the little raindrop trick or any, any of the designs, you don't want it to melt it. So Pour it hot first, then you can kind of lightly spritz it with alcohol. Don't come at it with a hose of it <laughs> or a, a high strength industrial sprayer because you're going to kick up the mica and again, dislodge the, um, the look and the design you've created. All I'm doing here is a quick trim. Um, you don't have to do this. You can trim them after. You can do whatever you like. You could be more careful and not spill it like me. But um, I'm not great at that. So I most often end up having to come back and trim a little bit. Um, uh, excuse me. The, uh, yeah, the first one is this. So I'm just unmolding them here. I'm going to show you a better close-up in, in a minute so you can kind of fully see how the light comes through that clear and is reflected back by these gorgeous micas. Um, if I have left... Uh, anything out, please uh, don't forget to ask me questions in the comments. This isn't the end of it, but I do um, I do want to remember to ask you to ask me other questions too. Because in a couple of weeks, my one year anniversary of being on YouTube is coming up on Valentine's Day. And I'm going to do a Q&A. And I need questions. If nobody a asks me questions in the comments, I won't have any. <laughs> I, there will be a few frequently asked ones that I will go back through my comments and look for and pull those out, the ones that seem to be asked the most often. 
but I'd really love some personal questions. If you, le- I, I mean, mildly personal <laughs> and, uh, you know, get to know me a little. And the other thing is, is I'd like to be able to shout you out. So if you leave me a question, uh, specifically for this video, um, I'll, I'll shout your name out and, um, and hopefully answer your question. Hopefully have a good answer for you. Um, yeah, these are the little close-ups. Uh, check out how, I mean, these, these were not made well. I goofed them a little bit. I goofed the, the spots or whatever, but they still look really cool. I think they still came out really nice. I, I wasn't, uh, I didn't plan them. I was kind of going, like I said, by the seat of my pants. This one, I think I would have been more happy with if I had gone the full route with that and put more of the mica in, more of the black mica in all the way across. But anyway, it's just a look I was playing with. This is the duochrome. This is what it looks like when you have a mica that shines two different colors at the same time, depending on the angle. It really picks up the angles that you've created with the saran wrap or the plastic wrap. So that, and this one right here, that image is pretty true to the colors. It's in some of the pictures that it doesn't show up as well. Um, yeah, this one is too. You see there where I was adjusting my hands, you saw the sides are kind of messy. Um, easy to clean up. I just used uh, a little uh, lintless paper towel and uh, had sprayed it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just gave the sides a good rub down. Cleans up quite nicely. I also kind of had to clean up the backs because the the cutting with the knife on this mold is a little more difficult because the mold is a little bit graded as it goes to the from the top to the bottom so as your your last pour is a little bit more a little wider just barely just enough <laughs> that if you make a cut like I did when I was trimming you just have to make sure it's it's a good one you have to make sure it's all even so I cleaned all that up just again by taking a paper towel and just rubbing it down giving it a little polish so to speak I didn't have to do that on the fronts because they came out perfectly clear and um, it was just getting that excess mica from the sides and making sure um, that the that the mica and the activated charcoal layer were good and uh, they all were. So I'm hoping that you got something out of this one and I'm hoping that uh, you have some questions for me either about these soaps if I left something out or about making soap in general, or if you're curious more about me, I will go mildly personal is what I'm putting in <laughs> personal light. Uh, if you want to get to know me, so please leave comments, questions, please subscribe. If you haven't, um, I really do appreciate all of my subscribers and the time that you give me. Um, I love that, uh, when you watch and comment, and like and share it really helps my channel to grow and I feel like I've become friends with some of you so uh, again I can't thank you enough for this last year has been incredible have a great day thanks bye